and we should be live here. Hello everyone, Commonwealth Realm here with a very special guest this time around for our last uh, Breath of the Wild news roundup. We are six days away from the launch of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild for the Nintendo Switch and Wii U. So why don't you introduce yourself, uh, Zelda Master? Hey guys, uh, yeah, I'm Zelda Master, as uh, Commonwealth just mentioned. Uh, I also go by Luke, and uh, I cannot wait for Breath of the Wild. It sucks that, you know, this is the final roundup, but it's also awesome that it's the final one, because now the game is going to be out by next week. So, yeah, I, I can't wait. It's indeed uh, has been an incredibly long wait. Some of us have been waiting for this game since Skyward Sword, uh, but most of us have probably been waiting since uh, that first great look at Hyrule at E3 in 2014. And since yeah. ba back then, we have waited almost three years, and the wait is about to end. Yeah, finally, six more days, and we're, we're all going to have it, like, I can't wait. It's it's gonna it's ridiculous that this game is finally coming out because this is gonna redefine Zelda entirely uh, with how different it's gonna be. Because since Nintendo first mentioned way back in like 2013 that they want to rethink the conventions of Zelda for you know Zelda Wii U, well this is it. It took them a while, but I think it was definitely worth the wait. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's true, and uh, it's no doubt that this is the magnum opus of AJ Anuma. Uh, some people are already playing the game, but we need to at least tell one thing to all the viewers. We don't have review copies, we are not under embargo, so we are much free, freely uh, available to talk about the game, and uh, uh, also because we have no clue. Uh, well. Zelda Master, he will explain a little <laughs> bit later that he has some clues, but I will yeah. make sure that he doesn't break any rules and we don't get any copyright strikes from Nintendo anytime soon. Uh -huh. So, uh, I think we'll just begin by uh, walking over some of the... Uh, well, actually, we could begin by talking about the review copy situation, because, as you may know by now, we at Commonwealth Realm did not get a review Switch unit. Uh, I'm going to correct uh, a little bit there because I'm getting one from Nintendo of Norway at launch. Uh, but uh, another person who should definitely have gotten a review unit who lives in the United States, who has more than 200,000 subscribers, is you, Zelda Master. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I can't really speak too much about it, but I was on the list to get one it's just like a lot of other youtubers it was kind of like some people got them some didn't it just sucks that i didn't because i was really banking on getting a review copy to play it but oh well i'm gonna have to wait like everybody else you know six more days and we can play it Ooh. That, yeah it's uh, it's it's a pain it's a torture for for us mm -hmm. to especially since uh, Zelda Master would definitely make a brilliant Let's Play uh, and <laughs> nice. walkthrough for for Breath of the Wild, which is quite a challenge. Both you and the completionist has quite a lot of work uh, ahead of you. Oh yeah, but it's going to be exciting. Like that's that's what I look forward to. I love completing games. I love just mm -hmm. like having things to do and doing side quests. Like this game is filled, littered with it, and it's supposed to be the biggest Zelda game to date. So I'm ready to take on this challenge and let's play it. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so we are both ready. You are all ready. We are super hyped for the game of the Switch, the game of the Wii U, probably <laughs> the best game of all time. And uh, we'll be going now a little bit over the news stories, beginning from Monday and a little bit of a summary from last weekend since we had our last roundup. Uh, so uh, just enjoy this little video by um, Alex Myers. Uh, and we will keep silent while it runs. Site 4 Breath of the Wild now has a new background section with more information about the world and characters, which reads as follows. 100 years have passed since the terrible tragedy that destroyed the kingdom of Hyrule, known as the Great Calamity. Our hero, Link, awakens from his long slumber in an underground ruin. Led by a mysterious voice, he steps out into the great land before him. Further down the page, we get some brief introductions on the cast of characters that we will all get to know very intimately in just a few days. First, we have Link, the boy who awakened with no memory. Led by a mysterious voice, he sets out on a journey through the great and vast Hyrule. Zelda, 
The Princess of Hyrule. Though wise and full of curiosity, she battles with a very deep complex. She goes out to investigate the ruins of the old world on her own. Next we have Daruk, a Goron who lives in Hyrule. He is one of the top warriors of the Gorons, and is always calm and collected. But, once in battle, he lets out a hysteric battle cry, swiftly and bravely defeating all his enemies. Next up, Rivali, a Rito who lives in Hyrule. He wears the same blue cloth as Daruk and Mifa. Speaking of, Mifa, a Zora who lives in Hyrule. She is very shy and introverted. She has a special power that no other Zora has. Coming up, we have not necessarily a character, but more information on the Guardians. It is said they were created by people long ago. During the Great Calamity, they suddenly began attacking, and this has continued for the last 100 years. And finally, Bokoblins. One of the many monsters that live in Hyrule. They live in small colonies with other Bokoblins. They also have an adorable fear of bees. If seen, they will immediately attack. So, there you have some more information to wrap your head around as you wait these last few days for Breath of the Wild to be released. Now, it's no secret that not everyone is happy with the Zelda DLC announcement. Bill Trennan from Nintendo stepped in to give us some more information on why the DLC would be created for Breath of the Wild. And he says, quote, It was tough, because we actually had a lot of debate in terms of do we announce it, how do we announce it, I think one of the things that's unique about the way Nintendo develops games is when we're working on a game, and certainly just knowing the history of Nintendo games, you guys know that it's essentially we use every last minute to make the game as good as we possibly can. And really what that means is that the dev team was working on the main game, finishing the main game, and as they're starting to get to the very end and wrap it up, really they said, you know, we've made this massive world of Hyrule, we spent a long time building it. It would be a waste to just make one game and have that be it. We want people to be able to enjoy exploring this world. And so they started thinking about, well, if we were going to do DLC, what would we do? How would we do it? And you can see that in the fact that it's not, the DLC is not launching the day after the game or the week after. It's coming out several months later in the form of the first pack, then several months later after that in the form of the second pack. And that's because the content is in development. So I think from my perspective, obviously, if we were able to share more details, that would have been easier. But if you look to the example of something like a Mario Kart type of a DLC approach, really, what the goal is is let's give people the option to purchase it when they're at the store buying the game and give them something to look forward to, and kind of let them know there's more to come in this world. And if you're a Zelda fan buying Nintendo Switch at launch, and really, you're buying it for Zelda, I mean, how happy are you to know that, hey, I'm gonna be able to play more Zelda in this world again later this year? In a Q&A with Nintendo France, Eiji Aonuma was asked once again about Link's signature green tunic. He answered that, although there are certainly many different clothing styles for Link... Um, we can talk again now. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, those were just a few news stories, uh, some of them from the last weekend, and some of them were posted uh, uh, as a celebration of the 31st anniversary of the original Legend of Zelda game for the Famicom. So, the first couple of news was just about, uh, a little bit about uh, uh, the characters, the world of Hyrule, and, uh, and so on. Uh, so, what are your thoughts about the information we got about the characters um, at the Japanese website, Luke. Oh, okay. Um, I think it's very interesting, and I think it already gives us an idea of what these characters will be. Clearly, uh, the three that we've seen are very important characters. I mean, one represents each of the three tribes as well. I do have a feeling that, you know, the Gerudo also plays a very important part. They just haven't uh, shown her off yet, but... Um, yeah, I, I can't wait to see what these roles of the characters are. I do know a little more than I should about them, so I don't want to... I, I don't really want to even speculate, because I'd be lying, because I already know uh, one of the roles of the characters, so I don't really want to get into it. But, yeah, these characters are definitely important, and I can't wait to uh, see them in Breath of the Wild. So... Yeah, and that's um, that's the thing. I think uh, the characterization, the storytelling, and how these characters develop will be much more in depth and also much more uh, direct. Uh, you'll feel much more attached to the characters than you did in past Zelda games, mostly because I guess they are voiced now. Yeah, yeah, voice acting is a feature that. At first, I, I was like, whatever. I didn't really think it was going to be much, but after seeing it implemented in the game and 
and seeing how the characters come to life with it. I'm actually very excited for it. Though it's not really throughout the whole game, it's just going to be in major cutscenes. I'm still excited to see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a, is one of the things we can definitely look forward to. Okay, the second story was about the DLC situation, and we know that uh, Bill Trinan had to go at the Nintendo voice chat uh, hosted by IGN to talk about why they did this expansion. Uh, did you see the video? Did I see the video? Uh, I actually didn't see uh, or like really read up on it because I was already backing Nintendo to begin with. I didn't see a point in even them responding to why you know they're like why they're making dlc and why you know fans are upset because to me i think dlc is amazing and i'm so glad that dlc is coming to zola i know i might just sound like a fanboy but let's be honest paying 20 dollars for new content within the game and it's still being developed i think people are just jumping the gun and we're just generally upset that wow nintendo's you know announcing dlc before the game is, is even out they're clearly going to withhold some content from the game but people didn't really look into it like they're not withholding anything most likely this like as they said it's new story so this wasn't going to be in the game originally so they're going to add more to it and it makes sense we're in an era that we can have dlc games literally can be uh you know can have more story to it a year after it was released and i think that's awesome i don't know why people want games to end once they're released like why is dlc so hated on i can understand Oh, having to pay more, but like, imagine them releasing a new game entirely. You'd have to pay another sixty dollars instead of just paying twenty to add on to your game, and it will feel like, like an expansion that could be an entirely new game. I mean, that will be that big, but it's still gonna be worth it. I can assure you, especially mm -hmm. for Zelda. I mean, all of Nintendo's DLC has been pretty decent with Smash Bros. and Mario Kart, um, mm -hmm. at least for me. So, yeah. Uh, another thing that was revealed, uh, this might be a minor spoiler for some, but it's, it's pretty given that the green tunic is indeed in Breath of the Wild and can be found. Yeah. Uh, some people have already located it uh, and are spoiling it um, for them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah some I've have even spoiled, spoiled it. it. Some have even spoiled it. Uh, we'll be just showing this artwork you know the concept art of link uh with um, a modified green tunic that was made by zeltic back at e3 but at least uh, there you have it the green hero tunic is there and uh, if you want to locate it you you prob you will you will be able to do so but you will probably have to search for it for quite a while until you you get it or do you know something about how long it takes uh do I, okay here's the thing like i said uh, even though I didn't get the game early, uh, I, you know, n know someone who got it early and I was able to like get a lot of information about the game. And at first I was like, oh no, I don't want to know anything because spoilers, but it, like I, at this point I just need to know what I can know about the game. So I'm prepared when the game comes out and either way I'll be just as excited. I'm one to, even if I was spoiled. If I'm not experiencing it myself, it won't be as hard hitting as like watching someone else experience it. So I'm still excited to do whatever I w I've watched and been spoiled on like myself. But yeah, the green tunic is in the game and I, I just don't really want to say anything else. Just the fact that people are going to be pleased with, with the green tunic and you're, it doesn't matter what kind of tunic you like, I just look forward to it because you're gonna like the idea and how they like implemented it within the game but like i said i don't want to spoil anything so i'm going to refrain from it without going into detail mm -hmm. okay so uh we'll be moving into spoilers a little bit later so we'll be giving a spoiler warning when we get into spoilers okay so we'll be moving over then to i think this was wednesday when uh, we got a little bit of information about the amiibos uh I don't think it, I will be classifying this as spoiler, but Game Explain got the uh, uh, got the big package from Nintendo, and they decided to show off uh, the different amiibos and what they do, including the Guardian amiibo, the Link Archer amiibo, the Zelda amiibo, Bokoblin amiibo, uh, and of course Link uh, Rider amiibo. And uh, we know by now that the Guardian amiibo will be giving you. 
some uh, technological items, uh, including that uh, blue arrow that we saw back uh, in back at E3 at the Beyond Plateau gameplay, uh, and also um, at the first trailer back in 2014. Mm -hmm. So, what are your thoughts about the amiibos? Are they really worth the price? Uh, honestly, I think like every amiibo, if you want to buy them, you want to buy them because they're amiibo. Like you just want to buy the figure itself. You don't really care about its functionality. If you're really buying it for the functionality, you're gonna be disappointed. I mean, you're you're paying twelve dollars for some fish and a chest, so. Is that worth it? No, clearly. That's like people got mad at DLC that's $20 worth and you're getting actual new content, yet they'll buy amiibos, which are also almost $20 for one, and you get nothing out of it. It's just the physical item that you receive. And yeah, I'm excited for the amiibos because I want to collect all the Zelda amiibos. I just want it for a collection. But as far as the content I'm getting in it, I'm, I'm not, it doesn't really matter. Like, I'm not too excited for it. It's cool that I can get. Uh, like some of the um, like new weapons as well as I believe I can get like a saddle so immediately when I start the game I can try to get a horse once I leave the Great Plateau uh, I believe with the art the which one was it the um, horseback link I believe you mm -hmm. can like instantly get a saddle yeah so I'm excited for that but I mean like I said I don't think they would ever make the the loot you get from the amiibo too rare because it's yeah it's just mainly you're buying it for the amiibo itself and not uh, mm -hmm. the function it does. Yeah. I'm here, by the way. Oh, hello, Joseph. <laughs> I've been ready could... since since the last topic, but you're just like, nope, gonna ignore you. No, I, I think you. <laughs> I think you. Uh, I was trying to get you on, of course, but then yeah, uh, Discord were... is does not get along with me, so yeah. No, that's true. But then again, uh, say hello to Joseph, everyone. Uh, but first, uh, you did a vi news story video about the amiibo functions. Uh, yes, Joseph. I did. And what is your opinion? Are the amiibos worth the price? Because if you want all of them, you must pay around, isn't it around $100? Now let's think of the, no, I'm trying to think of the prices. I don't know if the Guardian amiibo costs more. That's the only one I pay It does. Ordered. It's like 18, I think. Okay, yeah. Uh, 18 or 16. I don't know, because I thought all these amiibo were priced at $16 or... Mm -hmm. you know, I'm pretty yeah, sure the Guardian is the most expensive. It's like $80. And I was going to order them off of... Uh, GameStop, but then they wanted me to charge me for each amiibo five dollars shipping. Like they uh, couldn't group it all together. So I was like, "All right, you know what? I'm good. I don't need the amiibo. Screw that." Yeah, exactly. I'll just wait yes. until I can get it from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I was thinking uh, when I went to pre-order. When I went to put more money down on my pre-order, they're like, "Hey, you want some amiibos?" And I'm like, uh, "I don't want to say no." So I guess I'll just get the Guardian one. And so far, that's the only one I'm sticking to. If I might get one. I might get one more come midnight release, but I, as far as I can tell, the Guardian one's the only one I want. And if I can't really say all of these be worth it if you want them all, unless you're such a huge collector. So in my opinion, only get the one that you think is going to benefit you most in the game, the items. And I totally think the Guardian Mio is going to benefit me the most because I want that arrow. I do not want to. I do not want to keep dying trying to fight these Guardians. So that's my honest opinion. Yeah, I think uh, as well. I think the Zelda amiibos are worth a little bit because you get that uh, nice steel shield. True. With the oh yeah, the with shield. The I forgot. Crest. Yeah. That, that's worth it. I actually really want the Zelda amiibo because the shield would be nice. True. Especially a sturdy one because most of the shields in Breath of the Wild seem to break pretty easily, and the uh, Rider amiibo gives you most likely a sword and a saddle. So that that's one is definitely worth yes. it. Though Link doesn't have a face in that one. That's true. Well, you mean like they literally did not paint a face on him? No, they didn't paint a face. Wait, really? <laughs> that's funny. Dang. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Wow. They, that doesn't they didn't surprise paint me, though. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, uh, I think the Amiibos would definitely be uh, been, uh, for, to some help in the beginning of the game. But as you defeat more and more Guardians, finish more and more Shrines, get the items from the, those places, uh, I think the Amiibos will be more artificial than anything. Yeah, for true. sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let's see. But you also have the um, the 30th anniversary amiibos, the Ocarina of Time Link amiibo, the Toon Link amiibo, uh, Zelda Toon amiibo, and then I have, have the yeah. 30th I have every 
I have every Zelda amiibo personally, and mm -hmm. um, I'm going to get all the Breath of the Wild ones. I didn't pre-order them, but when I get the chance, I will. Or not pre-order, but like when I get the chance to ever get my hands on them, because, yeah, I, I don't know. If for some reason, like, Nintendo is just so bad with supply. Like, I can never get my mm -hmm. hands on it. And I tr I think I'm fast, because usually, like, I, I usually want to do news on Zelda, right? So you think that I would, you know, be fast to this, but I'm not somehow it's just always sold out and i never get a chance to get anything but and then no you get a monster edition i didn't get i didn't get anything i actually oh. didn't even get a wii u uh but my friend who uh is also a nintendo ambassador since he luckily got a switch he is gonna uh like switch the uh, address to my place so that way i like i bought the wii u off of him pretty much uh, or the Switch, Matt, my bad. Freaking Wii U. Uh, no, but I was able to get a Switch off of my friend pre-ordering it because I did not even pre-order anything. So, But I'm mm -hmm. still going to try to get it on midnight as well. So I'll end up having two Switches. And I also ordered or pre-ordered Breath of the Wild for Wii U and the Switch off of Amazon. But I'm most likely going to buy them on midnight as well. So I'm just going to have so many extra copies <laughs> for no yeah. reason. But I need them. So the sooner the Luke, better, I guess. Do a giveaway. I know I, I I'm that's what I'm gonna do most likely with all of the extra ones. That's the plan. It's just once I get them all, cause if I might, you know, fingers crossed, maybe still get one from Nintendo, then I'll also then I'll have three. So mm -hmm. then yeah, I'll definitely have way more to give away. So yeah. um, this might yeah. be a little bit off topic, but uh, Asia Numa made his personal three best Zelda games, oh, and that yeah, one I that one was quirky. <laughs> yeah, I I honestly loved it. When I saw it, I'm like, that's that's awesome. Because was it number one, uh, Phantom Hourglass? Yes, but number three yeah. is your uh, is Twilight Princess. Number two is Ocarina of Time, uh, because that was the first game he was building, and they built it in 3D. And then you have Phantom Hourglass, which is what? <laughs> Dude, Phantom Hourglass is such a good game. I'm so glad. Well, that, like, it's like, yeah, enjoyed, I totally like he actually enjoyed it for what it yeah. was like making I mean, it and everything. Yeah, I like Phantom Hourglass too. I don't love it though, and I totally understand the criticism because going back to that one temple in the game is very repetitive and monotonous. But yeah, all a developers, the developer's perspective on a game is always going to be like a complete 180 on what the on what um mm -hmm. on what players experience like look at the look at graphic artist uh the graphic uh, comic book artist alan moore he hates all his work pretty much so there's always that <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, what i would say is uh i'm not a big fan of phantom hourglass i think uh that the temple of the ocean king is repetitive as 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 it gets really uh, come uh, on uh, dude yeah I it, it is annoying and i think it was a downgrade from the brilliance that what was the Wind Waker. Because Dude, I almost have nostalgia glasses on because I freaking love Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks. I know. I, I enjoy Spirit Tracks, but I just can't do Phantom Hourglass. I played through that game once, and I think that's more than enough Wh because what the sailing mechanic was horrible compared to the one in Wind Waker. And, okay, so and you're telling you me must, you must Tracks agree. was better? Spirit Tracks has way worse replay value because the game gets extremely boring, uh, like midway when you have to constantly, uh, mm -hmm. you know, go from one place to another. Unlike in Phantom Hourglass, halfway in you can actually. I teleport. just prefer the setting in uh, uh, Spirit Tracks. I like the backstory. I like the lore you have in. I guess New yeah, Hyrule. that makes sense. It, it and it is nice to see four different like. Uh, you know, biomes and be able to interact with everything. Yeah, because you're right, it's too much C. It's mm -hmm. actually way too much C in Phantom Hourglass, but I still love it. I don't know. Phantom Hourglass was good, and I think the uh, the Ocean Temple, the Temple of the Ocean King, I think a lot of people mislook it, because when you really come back to it and have played the game, you'll notice, wow, I could have solved a lot of like things to make it much easier with the items I've obtained mm -hmm. as I progressed. So overall, even when you do revisit it, it becomes much shorter mm -hmm. and wait like shorter and shorter every time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm going to do, just tell one thing. I enjoy really the character of Linebeck in uh, Phantom Hourglass, but the game has its problems. The same goes with Skyward Sword, and those are the two Zelda games that yes, I, I'm able to play them, but I, I just don't enjoy them as much as other at least 3D Zeldas. 
I don't fault you for that. So but yeah. Spirit Tracks is one of the very few Zelda games I haven't played. Mm-hmm. Should I go back and should I really play that? Well, of course, I run you a should. YouTube channel. A I mean, game. I run a YouTube channel a where game. we talk about Zelda, so I probably should, uh, but still. Yeah, <laughs> you should. Honestly, I think it's worth playing. It, like, it has funny characters. It fits. Like, Toon Link feels like it feels different. Like, Toon Link and uh, like the whole, mm-hmm. I guess you could say, adult timeline has like its charm to it than like every other timeline and every other game within the Zelda series. Like uh, Wind Waker, Phantom Hourglass, and Spirit Tracks are just like a trio that should definitely play be played together. Mm-hmm. Very good. Okay, let's get back to Breath of the Wild because we're talking a little bit too much about <laughs> yeah. things uh, off topic. <laughs> let's but talk about the future. <laughs> guys, we have a Sheikah village in Breath of the Wild. Uh, oh, and this, this isn't a spoiler because it was posted by the official... Um, uh, oh, man, I, I know page. so much about it. Too. Yeah, I, I know you know a lot about <laughs> it, and you are not going to say anything because I'm not getting a strike on this channel. All right, uh, uh, could I give you? Can I give you a hint? Of, like, okay, wait. So it's you the know, first living Shika village. You know uh, the name right? of the Shika village? Do you know its name? Uh, no, and I don't want to know. Okay, whatever. So <laughs> <laughs> I know you have been watching someone playing yeah, Breath of the Wild, yeah. but we want to play the game. First. No, I know it, it, it like, uh, yeah, I completely understand that. It wasn't re- it's not necessarily like a spoiler. It's more mm-hmm. so like, uh, oh, that's really interesting or something. Mm-hmm. Like, like, I don't like when I, when I, when I heard about it and learned about it, it didn't really like blow me out of the water that much. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's how I've been feeling lately with all these quote unquote spoilers. It's not like my spe- my experience has been detrimental. Yeah. It's not going to yeah. kill you. That's what I'm saying. That's why I f- like, I want to say it, but. You know, it's fine. I'm not going to. Don't worry. The anybody. comments will lose their mind. I'm yeah. getting comments yeah. right now I've just on been, my life. Yeah. I have <laughs> just been very careful after we did that Dungeons episode and showed literally everything that is to see in a dungeon. In... Mm-hmm. P- yeah, true. Yeah, people, that will... are getting, people are getting so mad at the... Yeah, at but the we, we, we place a lot of spoiler warnings. We have even a um, visual showing warning, warning, like a nuclear explosion or whatever. I so, haven't... Watching yeah, Breath of the Wild videos now means that you will get spoiled because people want to upload new stuff. Exactly. Uh-huh. What's funny is I haven't actually really spoiled the game myself, but like the one video I made that's called uh, Link's Death in Breath of the Wild, I got a lot of like hate for quote unquote spoiling the game when the whole thing is a theory that I don't even have the game. <laughs> exactly. so how does one spoil that Link died in Breath of the Wild when I'm just looking at trailers and saying, hey, it looks like Link died because he woke up in the Tower of Resurrection and we see clips that, you know, Link beat up. So Link's death in Breath of the Wild. And I even put like discussion, but everyone thought somehow I managed to get the game, beat it, watch Link die, and, and that I spoiled it for everybody. Exactly, that didn't happen. And yeah, it didn't happen. It was just a theory. There are, a lot, there are a lot of people avoiding spoilers, so uh, I think we'll be going for, say, five more minutes without spoilers, but then uh, we'll be moving into some slight gameplay previews, and that means that if you want to go blind into this game, you will see spoilers. Yeah, so, but like I said, it's not this a, is a warning. experience. But for now, we're sticking to the screenshots, and now we're looking at the screenshots from inside the stables, and mm-hmm. it looks like a mini cheap motel where you ha- no i mean hostel we have to share beds <laughs> with everyone yeah in, there's no privacy the <laughs> there's no, no privacy, privacy. <laughs> and people can steal all your items <laughs> i don't it think that like happens freaking though. gryffindor tower in- <laughs> I, I like it. it reminds me of like the inns from final fantasy you know how you just walk in and there's beds everywhere so yeah. that's i mean it works yep. yeah yeah, I mean, it, like, I don't think they have to make it very realistic. I mean, the fact that they even added beds, I think, is uh, interesting. Because we knew from E3, so this isn't a spoiler or anything, that when you sit by uh, campfires or, like, uh, pots, I believe, you can um, have time pass by. Mm-hmm. And uh, that doesn't heal you at all. But to, if you sleep on a bed, it will actually heal you as well as uh, you can choose, you know, if you want it to be the afternoon or the morning or midnight. So. And don't, don't you get an extra yellow heart as a uh, result? I, I believe from certain stables, if you pay additional rupees, that was a thing that Game uh, Game Informer mentioned in the okay. uh, latest issue. That yeah, if you end up paying more rupees, you'll get like two additional yellow hearts. That when you lose them, mm-hmm. they'll never come back. But you know, it's just like a miniature buff for sleeping in a nicer bed. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
we also got another screenshot of Link battling uh, green Lizalfos. And these enemies, they look, they have been mo modeled just like uh, chameleons. Mm -hmm. They, they yeah. can camouflage basically everywhere. I love it. The they little foes impress me in this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they look really, they look really badass. I love the armor for them, and there's mm -hmm. uh, also ice versions as well that do like a crazy amount of damage. I believe they shown mm -hmm. off as well. Yeah. So they they seem they seem scary, and overall, all the enemies seem intimidating because they're not as dumb as they were in like other 3D uh, Zelda platform. Like any of the other 3D Zelda games, the enemies are very basic. I would say Skyward Sword. It was a little difficult because you had to use the motion controls and enemies wanted you to attack them a certain way. So actually required, you know, not just the same attack pattern like B, 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 B or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's literally every other Zelda game. You can get by by just spamming the B button while mm -hmm. fighting an enemy. It's very simple. I'd say maybe in Ocarina of Time, like the Stalfos required a little effort. But other than that, even Dark Nuts, they weren't hard at all. But every enemy in this game seems to have like an attack pattern and I love that it just mm -hmm. yeah it, it just it's, it's scary like you're gonna be diving into a world you're not gonna want to just you know like bomb rush the enemies and fight them you know willy-nilly thinking you're gonna escape because you're not going to most likely you might end up dying so yeah the the i was playing the game yesterday at the san francisco event i'm gonna have a video up on that tomorrow and and i was watching alan play next to me my buddy alan who brought me into the event and he got cornered by like the three bacoblins in that <sighs> In that base, that where you can like shoot the lantern and then have them explode. Mm -hmm. He went in yeah. all cocky because this was his first time playing, and he's like, "I've played Zelda games before. These guys ain't nothing." Of course, he died. I'm just yeah. like, "You damn fool! This is not your ordinary Zelda game." <laughs> yeah, you have no idea. Stealthing is very important, not only for animals but even enemies. Beware of just enemies catching you because mm -hmm. you like this game since it's so open world. You will possibly come in contact with an enemy you are not ready for like you will die in one hit similar we already know the guardians can do that so that's an enemy we don't want to see early on within the game or we're gonna be fried immediately yeah because the guardians are horrible the the range they have of the beams are just terrifying and they're so accurate it's like the delay is like a millisecond, like right before you get hit is the mm -hmm. only time you can dodge it. You have to be really precise when dodging the guardian beams. Yeah, yeah. and this, this is ba basically the most brutal Zelda game since maybe Zelda 2. That's what that's what yeah. a uh, that's what somebody from Polygon said. Yeah, but He's that was Zelda One. <laughs> Zelda One is okay to some extent. Zelda One is not brutal at all. It's not that brutal. Uh, it's just um, uh, what would I call it again? It's uh, puzzling. Yes, for sure. That's what it is. It just leaves you clueless, and that's mm -hmm. what's the, that's the charm about Zelda One. And I mm -hmm. think that's you know what we're gonna be experiencing in this one because we're gonna have access to everything. It's like, what do I do? Like the game isn't telling me where to go. It's not linear like I'm used to. It's actually open world. It's just and like other open world see. games we play. Which yeah. if you haven't played, <laughs> I think if you want to be ready for Breath of the Wild and the combat, go and play The Witcher Three, because <laughs> then you will know a little bit more what awaits you in terms of difficulty. This is not yeah, your I, typical Zelda game. I still think the combat in Zelda is easier to pick up on than in The Witcher. The, mm -hmm. A lot of people complain about The Witcher 3's combat, which I get, but uh, the learning curve in The Witcher 3 is very is very massive, but compared to, Zelda, to, compared to Breath of the Wild, it's still easier to get around. But even then, they're both really hard games. But that's mm -hmm. Nintendo. Nintendo's not going to make an extremely hard game because that's not what yeah. they aim for. They want their games to still be enjoyable and to cater to any audience. Like, they still want kids to be able to play this game. Even though it's going to be difficult and they're going to die a lot, they should be able to manage. But if you give someone like Dark Souls... I'm not saying that game is very difficult, but that's a game that trolls you. Like, it forces you to die. It expects you to lose. And that's just oh, the yeah. way the game is designed. I don't think Nintendo wants Breath of the Wild to be that. They don't want you to die a hundred times and be like, oh, that's just a part of the game. Everyone does that. Because mm -hmm. I believe it also even keeps track of your deaths. Like every death you get, uh, you'll have an X on the map where it says rip. So you can't escape your deaths. Like pe everyone will know whether or not you died within mm -hmm. your playthrough. Exactly. Okay, uh, <laughs> let's move over to the last non-spoiler story. Uh, and we'll. this is a warning to all of you watching this. This is the last story, and then we'll be moving into some previews, if you consider that spoilers. 
<laughs> but we'll be talking about how big the map is in Breath of the Wild. We'll be talking about some of the amazing features in the game. And we'll be talking a little bit about some of the mechanics. So if you don't, if you want to go in blind, uh, leave after we are done talking about the first review score, which was done by the Edge magazine. They had a beautiful cover saying that they have uh, reviewed Link's awe-inspiring Switch debut, plus the story behind the game's creation. And this this cover is just beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. I agree. I just love how well. Uh, it represents the game, Link swimming with uh, with the weaponry and being a little bit vulnerable. Absolutely. Like, he's yeah. not stone this, cold. And honestly, I, like, what's funny is I'd say the swimming, the swimming mechanic in general isn't the best uh, from what I've seen so far within the game. Like, your Link uh, drowns a lot if you lose your stamina, which I think is a, a little ridiculous because... Then you can't swim too fast at mm -hmm. all, and you're gonna I've, end up I've, drowning a lot. I've drowned during my playthrough. I saw Conrad <laughs> drown during his playthrough. It's easy. To yeah, do. yeah, exactly. Yeah, but the stamina is is a challenge, but I know it can be solved eventually. But that is spoiler and embargo territories, which we will keep away from. Mm -hmm. Yes, but there is a solution, and that is what matters. Mm -hmm. And uh, Zelda Master, yeah knows about it so uh, uh -huh. let's let's say let's say it like that that damn okay. zelda master always <laughs> knowing things so <laughs> what edge writes uh, of course they give breath of the wild a 10 out of 10. they say it's uh they write that the results for all the long uh long of it let's miss uh, okay could you read uh, joseph because i can't see because it's so tiny on my screen yes okay um well first of all i can only that there's a delay between between the stream quality. So, mm. are you asking me to read the quote? Because I have the quote right here. Yeah, just read the quote. Oh. Okay, cool. So, hold on. This was given to me on Facebook by my friend Michael Yee. Hold on one second. He was like, Joey, you gotta look at this. It's incredible. Okay. All right. Hold on one second. Okay, here we go. The result for all the longevity of its series and the familiarity of the open world genre is a game that evokes feelings we haven't felt for 20 years. Not since Ocarina of Time have we set foot in a world that feels so mind-bogglingly mind vast <laughs> and, unerring and unerringly magical that proves so relentlessly intriguing. Plenty of games promise to let us go anywhere and do anything. Few, if any, ever deliver so irresistibly. 19 years on, er on Ocarina is still held up as the high watermark of gaming's best loved and greatest series. Now, it may have to settle for second place. Ooh. Hey. Holy crap. <laughs> that that's, is... some that's some big words. Yes. That's, that's yeah. massive. First of all, I want to know, are they going to get in trouble for this? Because the embargo has not been no, lifted. No, 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 because remember, they are, they are a written media. And they have to okay. publish their magazine at specific dates because they have all those agreements with the uh, with the print shop and so on. So Nintendo understands those things. And besides, okay, it's, a, it's the first 10 out of 10 for Breath of the Wild. Uh, yeah, so why, 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 why would they try to strike yeah, this down? Why would that be an issue, you know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's 10 out of 10. I think this so. is going to get 10s out of 10s on a lot of media outlets. And this isn't me being a fanboy. This is me coming from, like, even Skyward Sword got a 10 mm -hmm. out of 10 on IGN. Uh, and it did I not know, deserve it. I don't nope. think so. Uh, yeah. It's still a really good game, but I, it did not deserve a 10 out of 10. Not bad, yeah, not no, I, I I haven't played Breath of the Wild, and I don't even... Well, most likely it is the fanboy in me talking, but even even if, like, Breath of the Wild will be, like, a 10 out of 10, it's not just because, like, it's their newest Zelda game, but it's, it's literally because Nintendo is actually deciding to change the formula and not do what they've been doing for so long. Exactly. Like they're, they're willing to change things up and give us what we've wanted. It's so weird because literally I've made two videos in the past like uh, year and a half talking about like my hopes for Zelda Wii U slash, you know, now Breath of the Wild. Because back then I didn't know the name, of course. And mm -hmm. um, I literally, well, I asked for DLC. I asked for like, um, different uh weapons and like actually being able to swap your weapons not just give link the master sword and whatever sword have link actually swap his armor all of that like literally everything i've asked for surprisingly has been answered and i realized what i was asking for was just like 
modern games. So, you know, like most games nowadays already have that. And it's so weird how Nintendo has never really given that to Zelda, but now they finally did it. And the, but the thing is, Nintendo does it best. So like, if you're gonna play an open world game, you know Nintendo will deliver best on that. Yes. Yeah, because this is a modern age Zelda. It's the next league for Zelda. Yeah. Uh, we have been bound to this traditional Zelda pattern that has existed for 3D Zelda games since Ocarina of Time. And I really don't, I haven't felt like we have moved away from it. We have been stuck in the same path for well over, well, close to 19 years. Yeah. And it's time to move on. Uh, some games have done op open worlds better than Zelda in the past. Now Zelda is about, now AJ Numa and the team of, at EPD are about to show who is the real open world master. Yeah, and, <laughs> but at the same time, I do admire uh, Aonuma playing other free roam open world games because those games took inspiration from Zelda. Now Zelda's about to take inspiration from them. You talk yeah. to anyone at CD Projekt Red and I feel like they'll tell you that they love Zelda. Okay, I'm just writing down in the comments, uh, because now we are moving into spoilers. Uh, if you don't want to be spoiled about Breath of the Wild, going blind, seriously, just shut this stream right now. We have been talking now for 40 minutes, <laughs> you have had your time, we have kept away from spoilers as much as possible, but there are, there's just so much news which can be considered spoilers for some of you. Mm -hmm. So, if you don't want to be spoiled, Leave this stream now. But Solid Snake, though. Shout out to Arlo. <laughs> yeah, Arlo just ruined uh, the point of spoilers. He, he calls official promotional material from Nintendo, including the first trailer for spoilers. <laughs> well, uh, he's a good guy. I like it. I met him in person. He, he's All a right. great. Yeah, he's a great YouTuber. But saying that everything is spoilers. No, that's not how the world world works. Yeah, well, yeah, I, d I don't agree with that either. But he's not hurting himself. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'll be doing it soft first by talking about what Edge writes about Breath of the Wild. And that is that you will roam around and get distracted by dozens of different things. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, in our uh, Breath of the Wild uh, best game of all time question mark video, uh, the season finale of Inside Breath of the Wild, if you haven't watched it, check it. There, is n there are no spoilers there. Uh, we said that there will be 1,000 plus distractions in this game. And can you confirm that there is like 1,000 distractions in this game? Look. Oh, can I confirm that is like, uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure on that. I mean, from what I've seen of the game, there is, yeah, there's plenty of things to do. There's a lot, but I'm not entirely sure what you mean by like a thousand distractions. Like, well, uh, gameplay wise, say that the, some, it's not for, like going, going in to like, one place. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. you will, yeah, yeah, you will be lost, and um, there'll be more than one path. It's not gonna feel linear at all. So yes, th there's a lot of things to do. There's a lot of things to visit. I, like they, they weren't lying when they said every playthrough is gonna be very different because you don't like Link is waking up with no memory, and you you feel just like Link. So you're mm -hmm. like, what am I supposed to do? And you're just gonna get lost, but you're gonna find a lot of things along your way, of course. So yeah, it's it's gonna be full of content. It's true. Okay. The next point they point out is that uh, there are w over 100 shrines and they all have a multi-purpose. Uh, th we know that the shrines will give you those spirit orbs and they have a function in the game. Uh huh. Uh, because um, when you complete four, sh there's a four four pattern in this game. Four first shrines, four shrines gives you something. Uh, and it's, it's an upgrade, so you want to finish shrines in Breath of the Wild. Absolutely. And yeah, they, we, they... we are on spoiler territory, so we might just sell, say that four shrines, uh, four spirit orbs equals one heart container, or an upgrade to your stamina meter. God damn, I didn't know! I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's been confirmed, and I think it's really cool, because it really plays into, uh, like, the story as well, because when you think about it, the Sheikah Shrines are made for Link to become stronger, so that he may once defeat Calamity Ganon. Now, gameplay-wise, how do you buff up Link? How do you make him stronger? Oh, give him more HP, give him more stamina, so, you know, each time you take on a shrine, the the puzzle you take on is like knowledge and it, it 
Link advances and like, you know, he learns from it. And I think it's really cool progression. And it's like, you know, some people can avoid it because what there's 120 shrines. So you don't mm -hmm. have to do them all. You're not forced to get all of these heart uh, containers as well as uh, um, like, you know, stamina upgrades. But I think the stamina looks very important. Like I'm excited to look for the shrines and want to take them all on. So that way I am very buff and like just have a lot of HP and stamina early on within the game. It's like a huge incentive to want to do the shrines. It makes the shrines seem worth it. Plus you're also going to be getting possibly from the shrines, the, uh, the new abilities like you know the first shrine you take on you get the magnesis and then hopefully in other shrines you're going to be getting a lot of other abilities i believe they confirmed like how many uh chica runes are there in total i, I think there was like a page where it showed them all uh, i think uh, it was a lot like 25 i believe yeah but i think something. uh that initially you have like four from the plateau and then five eventually yeah, like it shows you five, like when I played the demo, it only showed like five available, but I believe like when you have all of them, there'll be like 20 something, but I'm not sure. Like I I've just seen that, like it was a leak and I'm not entirely sure if it's 100% mm -hmm. accurate. Okay. So mm -hmm. let's move over to the next point, uh, because as you might see, a link has an additional upgrade and that's the way you get additional hearts. And I think that system works great. Yeah. It's so much better than just looking, because looking for heart pieces in this game would be a total mess. Yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. I'm so glad that you don't have to worry about that at all. Yeah, and I it, like it, it just and like I said, it makes so much more sense story wise as well. Mm -hmm. And it's also a great incentive to, as you said, to finish the shrines. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. you get for um, let's say everything out of this game, and the shrines, in some extent, let's be honest, they replace dungeons. Mm. Yeah, I mean, since four shrines equals since there are equal more... one dungeon. Yeah, there are more let's, shrines. Oh, let's say than okay, let's say eight shrines equals one dungeon. Would you agree about that, Luke? Yeah. Yeah, because you, then you'd get like a, you could get a stamina buff and a heart container from mm -hmm. all, and then each one is like some are known to be like five minutes long. Like the first one was only five minutes long, but mm -hmm. there are some to known to be up to like twenty to thirty minutes. But in like when you really think about it, I doubt there'll be that many that long with how many there mm -hmm. are. Like there's 120, so I think the majority will be up to 10 minutes each. Yeah, probably because you don't. They don't want you to spend like an entire dungeon solving yeah. one puzzle. But uh -huh. uh, I bet there is like maybe 200 hours of gameplay if you count everything in Breath of the Wild. Yeah. yeah. And you, there's also so much activities you can do even when you finish the game, such as flying, shield surfing, riding a horse. Uh, I don't know if the enemies respawn uh, or do they just disappear? Uh, I actually, re I, re I know exactly what happens, but it's a spoiler, so. Yeah, we I, are I in spoiler territory. So you would like to know? If they respawn or not. It's, it's just a game mechanic. No, it's not a game. Well, it's it's because it, there's something behind it. There's actually yeah, one I, I, element I, I, behind it. I know so there's something called a malice. No, 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 no. okay. Not that. Okay. See, that's the thing. Do you want me to spoil it or not? I don't. I don't know. Is it gameplay or story based? It's hard. okay. So pretty much, see, I don't know. It's it's not. It's only gameplay. It's all gameplay. It's not. It's not really story based at all. Mm -hmm. But it could maybe lead to the story. But I don't know. All I know, it's only gameplay based though. Mm -hmm. I see. Mm. So okay. I should mention it or no? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, let's ask the comment section. Comment section, do you want to know that detail that Zelda Master knows about? Like, if enemies respawn, like, the whole dynamic behind them. Yeah, Someone's yeah. already commenting it. Someone, like, I think people know. People say yes. They respawn. Yeah, so how it that, works... That's great, because one of the things I hated about Witcher 3 was when you killed an enemy, they never reappeared. Which meant well, that you... eventually the world was rather empty. Hey, guys, uh -huh. what is Blood Moon? Okay, so can I say it now? <laughs> no, okay, no, so don't tell what Blood Moon want... is. Please, oh, so... that is oh, okay. spoiler. That's a I big spoiler. I was going to say, that, well, you guys were wanting me to tell you guys how they respond, so I feel like the chat is pretty much saying it. Yeah, the chat, I don't care what the chat says. <laughs> but that's just in, me. We are in spoiler territory. We're getting deep into spoiler territory. Okay, should I, should I just mention it? Because I feel like we're on this for too long. 
Spin it! You might as well now. All right, so enemies die, but when you go to bed, Link has like a dream, and you, you see it literally in a trailer of like all of the enemies respawn, and it looks like a. I'm assuming people are saying Blood Moon because you see a Blood Moon, and then all of the enemies respawn. Like Link has had a nightmare, and then you wake up, and all the enemies are there. That's so, really scary and interesting. Yeah, it's so cool. Like when I first saw, it, I was like, "What the like?" Oh man, I wish I had it though. But six more days. I thought, was gonna, I thought it was good. Yeah. You're spoiling yourself so much, dude. I know, but what can I do? I just want it, dude. I can't help. You've played like... <laughs> how many minutes have you played of Breath of the Wild, including all the demos? I've only played the demos. I've never actually played it, because I'm watching my friend through Skype. Like, he just screen shares, because he no longer lives here. He actually lived here a month ago, happened to move out, was also in part of the program, and got it. So it was just, like, unlucky on my part. Does he have a YouTube channel right where we can yeah, harass him? I, no, I'm not going to mention him then because I don't want it to be mentioned uh, after okay, cool. I've said so much about this. You talk so much <laughs> crap about him, yeah. Yeah, like clearly, yeah. I'm, we're just not going to talk about that. All mm -hmm. right, cool. I love this uh, GameSpot video of Link Shield Surfing and air raiding Bokoblins. You can r literally do bomb raids. Uh -huh. Wow, it looks so nice, yeah. Just, Whatever just, I tell... Sorry, go on. It looks like you would be bombing from a big bomber during World War II. Yeah. Well, that, what, when people ask me what separates Zelda from the other open world games, I tell them, people, uh, I tell them, uh, open world games are the ones that tell you, oh, you see the mountain, you can go to it, you can do anything in this world. Zelda, you can literally do anything in this world. <laughs> yeah, especially that uh, stasis. Stasis is an incredible room. Yeah. Like, just mm -hmm. take, pick up anything, make a catapult. I'm it's like a, a super catapult. fast travel abuser. And the fact that they mm -hmm. were able to uh, implement this in this game is just insane. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's a huge, seamless open world. Yeah, really. It's, yeah. I wonder what's... Because there's an edge of the map. I wonder how they're going to pull that off. Okay, and that is perfect, uh, jo uh, Joseph, because we're moving into the edge of the map. Because what? Because Rx Gaming, <laughs> Rx Gaming, who is a British YouTuber, uh, got Breath of the Wild early and did a test. He walked from the bottom uh, south to the top north of the map in Breath of the Wild. Okay, and I just saw the part in the GameSpot preview where, since we mm -hmm. have a delay, where he literally just uh, flew off of that block. Mm -hmm. What the heck? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so cool. It's all about the creativity and what your imagination is in Breath yeah. of the Wild. And I damn love it. <laughs> oh, what, what will you try to experiment with, Luke? Uh, when I first get it, I'm, I'm definitely... I want to mess around with all the Sheikah runes because it looks like there's some... game. Well, not game-breaking because it just looks like they want the physics of this game to be all over the place. So I just want to try it out and see because I was just watching right now like the gameplay, how you're able to hold on to the fucking uh, giant uh, like block, and then you can fly with it after the uh, the yeah. abilities used, which looks so awesome. Or the fact that you can glide and literally uh, like you can bomb camps. Like what the freak? It's so ridiculous. I I know traveling is very uh, like traveling through the air is like very important because you're climbing all the time, so you need mm -hmm. to use your glider to go from like one place to another. So it seems like you're just going to be able to like literally like bomb rush anything without... Mm -hmm. That looks ridiculous. Plus, you have infinite uh, bombs because it's like uh, off of a cooldown system, right? Which is mm -hmm. really nice. I like that. I'm really glad. Well, I guess for arrows, that doesn't exist. It would have been nice to have like infinite everything, but mm -hmm. have like a cooldown and not have to worry. But uh, that might be asking for too much. Also, that might be asking for like easy mode, if anything. Mm -hmm. I saw a GIF where of a preview. I forget where. Uh, before we get onto that topic, you about the edge of the world. I saw one where um, the Stacoblins came out, and there was a Moblin there. And the Moblin decided to freaking throw one st Stacoblin at Link. I'm just like, oh man, that big homie took a little homie and threw it at Link. Oh no, this game is the best. Ten out of ten. The physics in this game is, oh my god, it's it's insane. I didn't think they it's would do insane. it. It's insane. The, the way that you can interact with enemies, with their bones, with uh, with their vital organs, it just feels <laughs> like it feels like the next level of gaming. 
it's nuts, and I can't wait to see what other games do to, to get inspiration from this game. Because mm -hmm. this ultimately, this is going to change other games, and this is why we need Nintendo in the game industry. <laughs> yeah, the exactly. map is huge. Yeah, I think you... what they did it with Ocarina of Time, so I guess Breath of the Wild will redefine gaming again. It's gonna like maybe a lot of like uh, gaming companies will take inspiration and make like this sandbox type open world to where. You can really pick whatever you want to do, but at the mm -hmm. same time has a lot of lore and story to it, because that's okay. what it feels like with Breath of the Wild. So oh, okay. Arex... and I just realized, yeah, I realized what we were just watching now. Okay. Arex confirmed that um, when you walk in Breath of the Wild, it takes around 28 minutes and 19 seconds, and he was trying to walk, not try to run, uh, just a fast walk from uh, the bottom, uh, bottom south of the map to the top north. What do you think about the size uh, of the map? That's a, for one, that's shorter than I was expecting, I think. Um, but also, it's like, I guess that's any game where you would where you just go walk in a straight line mm -hmm. for all of its existence. And I also noticed he was it wasn't even just going. It wasn't even just walking. He was climbing up. Mm -hmm. He was going down. So, yeah, that is a little short. But what matters is, like, what there is to do in the world. And there is a lot. So so there's that. But man, walk, try and walk diagonally. That's what I'm saying. Because mm -hmm. uh, I don't think the... I don't think the... Uh, the, what, the What's it called? The vertical length of the map is... Is a good is estimate. The, is yeah. a good estimate. No. Yeah. Yeah, I think you should need uh, you need to uh, stretch it from the bottom southwestern side to the bot uh, to the top northeastern side. Yeah, that will and give it a looks... much better indication of how big the map is. Exactly, and so it looks like the edge of the map is just a cliff mm -hmm. into nothingness. Interesting, but that well, makes sense. That's oh, okay. I didn't even know that. I wasn't like paying attention. That's literally how it ends. It's just a cliff. Mm hmm. That's cool. Well, I mean, also... similar to Twilight Princess, right? There was like a lot of just like nothingness. It's just like mm -hmm. what happened to the world. You just it's see either, the... yeah, it's either a cliff or a bottomless pit, like mm -hmm. a or a wall, uh -huh. a literal wall. Yep. And yeah, we also got some new enemies like those electric keys. Uh, and uh, yeah, you can also be uh, attacked by an angry ram. <laughs> and all the animals. I, I, it's just so much thought that has gone into this game. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like a, the the animals can also like, you don't just have enemies like the the common Zelda enemies we know. We also have animals in the mix, and we have just like so much. It's it literally is a Breath of the Wild, and like this world mm -hmm. just feels so real, uh, with like all of its story and everything. Like you can just really tell that like the time Nintendo put into this was worth it like I, I can't wait just watching the gameplay there is so much to explore and yeah granted it may have only took like 30 some minutes to run from one edge to another mm -hmm. but like the content in between that is is gonna be a lot like there's so mm -hmm. much to it so yeah and you can be hit a lot by lightning uh yeah if you have metallic objects and, and I just oh, saw yeah. that like, I just saw that electric bat what the hell <laughs> Or like the fire keys. Oh, the animation looks so nice. I love the animation for this game. Like the, oh, the art style is perfect. In the my anime opinion. inspired look is mm, sublime. Yeah, so good. Like it's it's not too much like Wind Waker's where it has a complete cartoony vibe. Yeah, it definitely has like this. Um, what was it? It reminded like Studio Ghibli. Um, mm -hmm. and like Prince yeah, Mononoke, yeah. I have Princess Mononoke. Yeah, that's it. It's pretty much Princess Mononoke. That's what it reminds me of a lot. I actually had like a wallpaper of Princess Mononoke and it looked so identical to Breath of the Wild. Mm -hmm. And I swapped it and I'm like, I, I couldn't even tell the difference because like how similar uh, the, the two remind me of each other. Plus with like Calamity Ganon. And if you watch Princess Mononoke, it's funny. You're going to find like a lot of similarities outside of just the art style that Breath of the Wild has with it. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. At the same yeah. time, I hope, like, in future installments, they experiment again with the Twilight Princess style. But, you know. Yeah, yeah. the dark style well, maybe, did look maybe really not nice. on, Maybe not on the Switch. Maybe the next hardware. Because I think the next Zelda game on the Switch should maybe stick with this art style or something in the same vein that will not show the age of the Switch yeah. hardware. Use, this, use the same assets, but, maybe. But set it in a different world, not Hyrule. Hmm. 
Yeah, it would be cool to see, uh, like, that Wii U tech demo that they showed way back of Link fighting, um, I believe, was it Goma? Or, it was, no, it was, it was uh, no, it was Armor Goma. Armor Goma, yeah, from Twilight Princess, mm -hmm. right. Uh, yeah, Link was fighting that in, like, a Temple of Time-looking room. I, that would be cool to get a game like that eventually, um, and, like, you know, have it very similar to Twilight Princess, because, I mean, when you think about that, that still looks better than Breath of the Wild, but that was a tech demo, I don't even think that was actually playable, like, it was all pre-rendered. Okay, we are into another spoiler, which is that you can dye your clothes. Let's get them green tunic oh, on, you, boy. <laughs> yeah. But you can die. I think that's so awesome that you can die. Yeah. Your it's going to make it even more customizable than before. Mm -hmm. And you can even make an Assassin's Creed like Link. Oh, yeah. yeah with all like white. all white. Yeah. Uh -huh, that's, mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. Yeah. Especially with the, um, <laughs> the Sheikah cloak that you're going to have. Yeah. And yeah the I've stealth, always, the stealth I've always wondered. I've always wondered if he, Link would be able to wear any clothing, like any hats. More than anything, because, you know, the green tunic and stuff that we all want to play as, mm -hmm. which we've been confirmed it is real. But I just I also keep forgetting that Link was wearing a cloak the first the very first trailer of the game. So it's possible they could have changed it, but I'm glad to see that they stuck with it. And it looks like the cloak is one outfit in general and that he can't wear un he can't uncloak no, his head. No, he, he he can uncloak it and it's it's a it's a unique item for just his head, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, I've seen the cloak just like... What? Like, like, it's not just its own outfit. You can wear the cloak with a different outfit, I'm pretty sure. Okay, because I'm looking at the footage Connor has showing up, and yeah, it looks I, like I'm watching all connected. The, yeah, I'm watching the footage too. I'm pretty sure you could take off, like, the trousers and possibly the shirt, and then you can put on different stuff and just have, like, the hoodie on. Because I've seen the cloak with different... Or maybe you can only switch the pants. I'm not entirely sure, but I know that it's not one outfit entirely. Mm -hmm. Also, wait, what was that? That that expression was freaking Yeah, that hilarious. expression was because they, they dropped him in the paint. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, man, that's, that's awesome. awesome. Yeah. It's very quirky Zelda style. I love it. Yeah, he, he's like, what the? And then they drop him into the pot. <laughs> so do you also know if there's a loading screen if you go inside of a building? Yeah, there isn't. There's no, literally, yes. the, the buildings are, yes. when you that's open not, it, you like walk in so naturally. It's yes, so cool. so good. Yeah, because uh, the only loading okay. screens are when you get into a, sh a shrine. A or shrine. Th and if okay. you die, yeah. Pretty much those are the only times you'll see a loading screen. We are so ready for this game. My <laughs> we are. God, how great is this? Okay, yeah. uh, the last story we might talk about is the battery uh, life of <coughs> during the Nintendo Switch while playing and that was uh, the Nintendo Switch. And uh, Rex Gaming, and I think Game Explained did a test checking how long it lasts. And when he was playing on normal settings, uh, let's say active gameplay uh, mm -hmm. of Breath of the Wild, he was able to play it for 3 hours, 2 minutes and 52 seconds until he ran out of uh, battery. And uh, okay. the w switch works in a way that it auto-saves whenever you run out of battery. Yeah. And you can just connect it then to a power supply and um, get going from the point where you were, well, where, where, where you run out of battery. So. You might not be as dependent on battery packs, because how will you be playing Breath of the Wild, Luke and Joseph? Luke first. Um, I will most likely. I mean, I'll eventually play it off of the dock, like you know, because I want to try that. And if I go anywhere, it would be nice to play it on the go. But I think mainly I'm gonna want to play it on my TV and just like enjoy the game. The way it's meant to because like i know the switch is meant to be portable and everything but it would just be so much nicer to see it on the big screen and just play it more comfortably on a controller sadly i don't have a pro controller for the switch ordered but oh. uh yeah you want that uh, i mean it would yeah i really no because i tried it when i was able to and it was very very nice i don't really like the joy cons too much the analog sticks are very small. It reminds me of like Bluetooth controllers for like mobile devices and stuff. That's literally what it felt like when playing with the Joy Cons. So it doesn't feel like a home console controller, like you know, especially a first party one. Like it feels kind of generic. But I mean, I don't know. I'm maybe jumping the gun. I've only had my hands for like tops one hour. Uh, once I actually own it, maybe my opinions will change. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be playing it as often as I can on the TV which is going to be very often because I like rarely leave the house. And 
But I do want to like take it out of its dock, and uh, also going to do is like, oh man, it's time to go to bed. I guess I can take this with me and uh, go upstairs, just play it in bed until I fall asleep. And so at that point, I'm going to have like the brightness down and stuff to like conserve battery and such. But you know, I'm also thinking about taking it to work, playing it on my brakes, playing it on mm-hmm. the bus there. Now I'm going to have to buy a lock for my locker uh, because because I don't trust anyone. Uh, yeah. But I, I work with good people, so I couldn't be too worried. But still, I also want to, I, like, I I want to use the Switch for what was meant to be used for, play it on the dock and play it on the go, because it's such a cool idea. When I played it on the, when I first played it, the Switch, mobily, at the event yesterday, I was playing Zelda, I took it out of its case, and I was just like, wow, this works better than I even imagined it would be, like... The thing is a perfect size. I didn't think it was too small. I didn't think it was too big. I thought it was the perfect size. Playing Splatoon on that's also really cool. But playing Zelda on it, I I got the hang of it instantly. I was quite surprised. And yeah, mm-hmm. I, when I docked it, I played it on the Pro Controller. Because yeah, I got that Pro Controller as well. Because it's fantastic. It is superb. But mm-hmm. I also don't want to feel like... I also don't want to tell people who don't have it pre-ordered that you're going to need it. Because that's that's just bad. That's a bad move on Nintendo. If a third party, ex- not a third party, if a separate accessory that costs way too much, that costs seventy dollars, is a necessity, that that's kind of a it's not that doesn't look good on their end. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm, I tell people just stick with the Joy-Con grip for now. It doesn't feel bad. My only problem with the Joy-Con grip is how small the buttons are. Everything else I think is perfectly fine. So I try to tell people that, like, if you see, wait, like, I don't have an issue with the buttons. It's weird. Mine was just the analog stick. I think that's weird. its biggest issue because, like, the buttons feel fine. It's just like, literally the analog stick feels way too small to enjoy Zelda. Like, you can't get. I mean, I don't think it allows you to do the instant spin attack when you rotate the analog stick and clicks B in this game. But it, it, you won't be able to do it to begin with in this game because. It's so difficult to like play with how small the analog stick is. At least for me, maybe my hands are too big. I don't know. I, have, I just I have massive hands. Also, I th- I guess it just depends on the eye of the beholder in this yeah. case. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. No, I mean, for me, till this day, I swear I cannot stand a Wiimote. So, um, <laughs> like, I, I think I'm just not into like those kind of controllers. I want an actual controller that I can grip. And, yeah, that's uh, a lot of people who don't like queer modes. I'm not. <laughs> I don't yeah. blame you there. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, that's uh, obviously true. And uh... I heard from I heard this weird tweet that was really ambiguous. You probably shouldn't have tweeted it out because we don't understand it. But there's from Alana Pierce on IGN. She said that she also no earlier she deleted another tweet, but she said there's a puzzle in the just like a puzzle or something or their part in the game where she where she's so stuck and she can't get past it without a pro controller and she doesn't have a pro controller and i'm thinking what 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 is it that you need on the pro controller that you can't get on the regular joy con grip like i'm legit curious what what this issue is i'm not saying her issue is invalid at all uh i'm just really wondering what it is (laughs) Hmm. it might have something with to do with the analog sticks Hmm. I don't. It's because so weird. The analog sticks on them. the Pro Controller are much better than than the Joy-Con. Let's face it. Yeah. Those are tiny. The the analog sticks on the Joy Cons. I still. I don't know. I don't. I don't. Yeah, even even with the Joy-Con grip, it just it feels off. But mm-hmm. I, I mean, I, I maybe you, yeah, it, people will get used to it. I just don't know. For me, I'm a little worried because. That's the only thing I'm gonna have unless somehow I'm able to get a pro control controller on midnight, but I highly doubt it. So I'm gonna have to use the Joy-Con until whenever Nintendo restocks. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, I doubt pro controller is gonna be that hard to find. Like at launch, maybe, but I think they're gonna keep those well, those well stocked. Yeah. Well, for now they're completely out of stock, so I have to wait until yeah, of course. The, yeah, until it actually comes out, and then yeah, we'll see. I'm sure there's non-pre-order ones you can get like day one. That's true. yeah. I hope so. I'm like the thing is, since I didn't get a review copy, I have to go like midnight launch, but I didn't pre-order it as well. So I'm banking on somehow being able to get both the Switch and a controller without you know pre-ordering it and still getting it midnight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, best of luck to you. Everybody wish Zelda Master luck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks. No, hopefully, yeah, hopefully it goes well. If not, I'll have it the next You better day, go but... camping, Luke. 
Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm most likely going to have to. It, it will be worth it. There's no way I can Because I'm not going to play it on the Wii U on midnight. I have to play it on the Switch. Like, it would really suck to be like, oh, well, I only have it on the, the Wii U. I can't play it on the Switch. Yeah, my friend is facing a similar... Alan, my, my friend, who's facing a similar debacle right now, he's like... <laughs> He's like, I can't afford a Switch, uh, but uh, I can. Can I borrow your Wii U, Joey? And I'm just like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna have to play it on the Wii U. Poor guy. Yeah, but then again, um, it was a Wii U game that was ported to the Switch. Yeah. yeah you're no matter what platform yeah. you get it on, you're gonna be in for one hell of an experience. Oh, yeah. But for making content on it, it would be like, you know, not the best idea to only play on the Wii U mm -hmm. because it just looks so much better on the Switch. So yeah. for me, I feel like I'm, I have to play it on the Switch, especially if I'm going to be recording it. So. Exactly. Yeah, the main reason I'm getting it for the Switch is uh, I'm pretty active out, outside of YouTube doing politics, studies, and so on. And actually, the week after uh, the Switch and Zelda launches, I'm heading to the National Convention of the Conservative Party as a delegate. And that would mean, otherwise, that I would not be able to play Zelda. But since there's so much time when you just sit there and listen to other people talking, that is perfect for me to progress in Breath of the Wild on, <laughs> on Dock Boat. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's that's very, like... You were telling me you're, you're going to be playing this mostly as a handheld, weren't you, Conrad? Uh, yeah, I mean, when I get the footage I need, uh, because you can't capture from handheld mode. Yeah. At least not yet. True. Though I doubt that they will make some capture cards for the thing because it has to fit in the dock. It's not like the 3DS capture card, which is a huge additional piece of metal. Yeah, you have, to right buy a, you have to buy a 3DS by its like you have to buy a 3DS mm -hmm. with the capture card built into it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think we'll be uh, ending soon, but I want to end uh, by talking about a little thing that I'm really getting obsessed about, and that is Breath of the Wild ma merchandise. Merchandise. There's a lot. There's a lot Breath of the Wild merchandise coming. All that merch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and my no, favorite... Please tell me you're not talking about the GameStop stuff. Uh, well, th those are just some cheap ones, but... Uh, yeah, okay. For me, it's mostly about uh, first four figures. Yes, okay. Statue. Then I'm 100%. I'm, uh, I'm with... Well, not just first four figures, but like Good Smile mm -hmm. and like any of the Figmas. They're making both a uh, like a Nendroid version of uh, Link. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to make... Um... Oh, they're also making not just Breath of the Wild, they're making Twilight Princess Figmas as well, which I'm really excited for. Yeah. But the best buy, in my opinion, is the first four figures 10-inch uh, Link Archer statue. Yeah, but who, how can you get that? Like, isn't that like sold out? Like, Best Buy. Second? You can still get it at Best Buy. What? How? It is. Uh, they have uh, pretty big stocks, apparently. And mm. I've already pre ordered two one for myself and the other for uh, the giveaway. Really? I did not know they had it at Best Buy. Well, okay, I'm going to see if I can still get myself one because I would love. I see, I gave up for first four figures because if it's like. Less than two hundred dollars. Usually, they never have it in stock. You know, mm -hmm. so it's just like okay, no point to try. Did you guys hear about the a uh, uh, little off topic, but on topic? Did you guys hear about what German Game Pro gave Zelda? Nope. They no. gave it a ninety-four out of one hundred, being the second highest score in its entire history. And The Witcher Three was given a ninety-two. Wow. Uh, yeah. Is that a German outlet or? Yeah, it's the German Game Pro. Okay, there's different. I don't know if Game Pro in general is German, but so it's, so it's the highest score ever. I think so. I just got it from a Facebook post, so I don't wow. know. I'm gonna look this up. Okay, so we got ten out of ten from Edge Magazine. Now Game Pro, which is a German uh, magazine, yes, gives it a ninety-four out of one hundred. Yes, that's correct. Which is the highest they have ever given. given second that highest. One. Second highest. Second highest. Okay, what is the highest one? I'm looking that up right now. I love the packaging of the first four figures uh, statue as well. Yeah, it looks really nice. I, I would love to get one. I'm going to definitely try to see if I can find one myself. It's like this should have been in the Master Edition. 
Not that. Okay, the monsters are yeah. nice and all, but it feels cheap. I'm sorry, the plastic feels really cheap. Yeah, it's like the Majora's Mask one, you know? Mm -hmm. It was nothing too crazy, but, I mean, I think everything else you get within the Master Sword Edition is worth it. Like, if you were to get just a Special Edition, then you're still... Because I, I really like how you're able to get, like, the soundtrack and the, uh, the uh, what's it called? The map as well. Like, oh, that's going to be so nice because it's actually supposed to be like beat up as well to fit within the game's theme and everything. Mm -hmm. Apparently their highest score was Arkham City, but I couldn't find a score. Hmm. Arkham City was the highest. Yeah. That's, okay, that's, what... a, that's a weird choice, but... Yeah, can, again, you take, can you take them seriously now? Like, are there reviews? <laughs> well, Arkham City is a really good game. Oh, just okay. Like... <laughs> we'll see. I, I never played. I was just assuming it was The Batman bad game is a good I, I know they're good but uh, it depends on the reviewer because outlets usually have more than one reviewer yeah i'm pretty sure different guys and people have different you. guy different tastes and and so on mm -hmm. like yeah. uh people have given bayonetta 10 out of 10s i i love bayonetta but i still don't think it's a 10 out of 10. it's not it's a 9.5 out of 10 but 10 out of 10 is reserved for those close to perfect games or games yeah. that make an impact that will change the gaming industry like skyrim is almost a 10 out of 10 because of how it changed uh, open world gaming and the result of skyrim is most probably breath of the wild yes let's face it mm -hmm. i don't know but play skyrim so there's that yeah yeah and they literally showed it when they first showed the switch i mean must be like you know must be nice sort of, yeah <laughs> no, it must mean something right mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> okay guys i think we have been talking about most of the news that is possible to talk about without going into story spoilers but uh i want to thank um zelda master luke for joining us and for this more casual discussion talking about uh probably what will be the best game of all time and uh, tell the viewers where you can where they can find you uh luke uh, yeah, no, thanks for having me. And, uh, you guys can find me, uh, if you just search Zelda Master on YouTube, uh, you'll find me, or Google it, or whatever. You'll find my YouTube channel where I do Let's Plays of every Zelda game 100%, so, yeah. It's a real shame that ac the actual Zelda Master did not get the, master, <laughs> the new Zelda first. Yeah. <clears throat> oh well, you know, six more days and we'll all have it, and we'll all That's be able true. to play it. Yeah, I'll, I'll make it through. I'll survive these six days. Hey, you can take your time at least. I can't. Well, not really. If anything, I have to like. I, I have to. Like, if if I were to get it early, I'd be able to take my time. But since I'm not getting it early, I have to kind of speed up because I'd want to like start the LP, but oh, also true. play it. So that's yeah. True. But mm -hmm. yeah, at least you don't have any embargo dates. Is what I meant. Oh, yeah, but I'm waiting until the third, so the embargo's already lifted, so... That's <laughs> true. Yeah. yeah. Hashtag salt. You know, guys, I'm <laughs> honestly really salty, let's be honest. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to be I, positive. I guess we all are really salty, because uh, it was hard to get uh, an early review copy this time around, if you're not a gaming outlet or a YouTuber that has 500k plus subscribers. Yeah. I mean, even, even the... I know people who have 20... like 30k... That got no, yeah, so, so, that's to be I, salty. <laughs> I don't want I don't want to get into it, but like uh, you know, th there were a lot of people who could have got it that didn't and a lot of people who didn't really like need it. I I feel like the management wasn't the best, but whatever. You know, stuff happens. The game is almost out. Let's move yeah. on. Let's move on. <laughs> Let's move on. It's 6 days, 6 days of waiting, 6 days of anticipating, and 6 days of uh, building up the hype to what will change Zelda and probably gaming forever. So thank you everyone for joining us for this uh, nice uh, afternoon or evening discussion depending on uh, where you live. Uh, until uh, the next video, this was the Commonwealth Realm. I'm thanking Zelda Master Luke for joining and the same goes for Joseph who is also from the Commonwealth Realm. And we will see you guys in a few days. Bye bye.